Well, good evening. It's uh, a pleasure uh, to join with you in celebration of the Persian New Year. I wish everyone here, as well as all of my friends and colleagues in the NCRI and MEK, everywhere, a happy New Raz. In particular, let me extend my very best wishes to Mrs. Rajavi, to all of the residents of Ashraf 3, and of course, to the resistance units on the front line in their, in their fight for freedom and democracy in Iran. As you all know, the symbols of Nauru's are also the symbols of the fight for freedom and justice in Iran. With Nauru's comes the spring and the rebirth. Darkness is replaced by new light and new life. With victory over the religious dictatorship, the Persian nation will be reborn again, ushering in a new era of peace and prosperity, the rebirth of a great society, of a great nation that celebrates the right of all peoples to live freely and to possess the basic human rights and the basic dignity that are the essential elements of a civilized nation. With the start of the new year, whether it's the first day of January or the first day of spring, I think it's useful to look forward and perhaps tonight the best means of looking forward is to start with the lessons we've learned from the past 186 days of revolutionary struggle, a struggle that really defines the uprising across Iran against the religious dictatorship. So what are the key lessons that we've learned? Let me just mention four of them. First, the mass killing of over 700 protesters and the imprisonment of tens of thousands is even more evidence than we needed that the regime has lost all legitimacy and all support of the people of Iran across all sectors of society. The mullah's only response to the call of the people for freedom is more brutality and repression. It's war on women and now the poisoning of hundreds of schoolgirls has demonstrated to all the truly evil nature of this regime. A regime grounded in medieval thought and brutality, a regime that cannot reform but is willingly and openly committing crimes against humanity to stay in power. Second, the regime has demonstrated that it is more desperate than ever before. The signs of desperation are everywhere. Inside Iran, the declaration of war on women is a declaration of war on all of the people of Iran. The economy is in ruins with sanctions, mismanagement, and pervasive corruption, robbing the people of Iran of their national wealth and their birthright. Abroad, the regime's desperation is also evident in its growing isolation. Its support for Putin's war on Ukraine only makes it more of a pariah in the international community. The growing dependence on China is making it another vassal state that Beijing will exploit economically and politically. The Chinese brokered arrangement between Iran and Saudi Arabia only reflects further desperation and is little more than a temporary band-aid placed on a gashing wound as the regime will never abandon its support for terrorists whether in Yemen, in Lebanon, in Syria, or anywhere else. Third, the appeasement of the regime in any form has failed to achieve U.S. objectives. The notion that the regime will become more moderate or will abandon its malign behavior has been proven false, definitively false. The regime can't change, it can only get worse. We know now that abandoning the principled policy of promoting human rights only encourages more gross violations. Moreover, silence in the face of mass executions and arrests 
is the abandonment of our values and the encouragement uh, to dictators everywhere. And fourth and perhaps most important, the world has learned in the past 186 days that the regime has no vision for the future, and in fact, it has no future. The call of the Iranian people to reject dictatorship, whether religious or that of the Shah, is not just a slogan. It is a testament to the determination of the people to establish a free and democratic Iran. This represents a historic turning point. The regime will never be the same. It is now undeniable that the regime's days are numbered. At the forefront of the fight for freedom are the resistance units in Iran. This is one reason the regime has declared the MEK to be public enemy number one. But the even greater threat to the regime from the NCRI and MEK is the vision for the future that is embodied in Mrs. Rajavi's 10-point plan, a plan that is recognized and supported by House Resolution 100, a resolution with 229 co-sponsors that views the NCRI MEK as a viable alternative to the Mullah's theocracy and to the Shah's dictatorship before that. Have no doubt, it is this vision of a free, democratic, secular, and non-nuclear Iran that scares the regime the most. But this vision will ultimately prevail. Thank you for the invitation to join you today, and happy Nowruz.